Uh, so we got the search tank mounted. I figured now would be a good opportunity to talk about uh, the decision why we decided to go with the search tank as well as a little bit more details on the search tank. I had covered some of that information in the time lapse of the search tank assembly, but evidently uh, it only captured in time lapse, so we didn't get any audio for that. So we're running a uh, DW300 as the primary pump in the surge tank, a DW400 as the second pump in the surge tank, which is triggered by the Holly EFI to come in under boost. So that pump will only run, uh, I think the threshold's at five PSI or something like that. Once we hit five PSI, that pump will come on, it goes below five PSI, that pump goes off. We originally had the hyperfuel cell in the truck. We had a lot of issues with reliable fuel delivery with the hyperfuel cell. You can see that the pumps in the units at the front of the cell. The cell is baffled, but it, it just didn't do a good enough job with the baffling. I don't know if when the second pump comes on, if it's draining that reservoir or if there's another issue going on with it, but we kept having a ton of issues that if the, tel if the cell wasn't completely full of fuel, we would end up with, you know, issues with fuel pressure drop or losing fuel pressure altogether. So, um, you know, we could talk about turning this cell around. That is a possibility, but you know, we're replumbing the whole thing at that point. We're having to move the vent to the, what is now the rear of the tank, would be the front of the tank. There's a bunch of headaches with that. And it still doesn't resolve the issue of fuel delivery potential problems if we're under heavy negative G-force, uh, like a, a heavy braking situation or something of that nature. So we ultimately made the decision that the surge tank would be the best way to resolve this, uh, short of a complete, you know, redesign of the fuel cell or a new cell. Uh, I liked the surge tank idea the best out of those options. So. What we're going to be doing is plumbing the surge tank up. This will be our output from the surge tank. Both pumps feed into a manifold inside of the surge tank and delivers the output there. We're going to probably come off the surge tank, come through the bed floor here with that. Uh, one of these fittings will be the return from the engine, which is currently right here. We're going to move that over to one of these. One of the remaining two will be delivery from the lift pump, which we're going to use one of the existing pumps in the cell as a lift pump. So we'll get that plumbed into one of those two pumps. We'll cap the second pump. I'm going to leave both pumps in there because if we ever had an issue where the primary lift pump failed, all we got to do is switch some wires over and we're, we're back up and running. So no harm in leaving that second pump in there. We're going to do that. And then the last of these fittings is the overflow from the surge tank uh, back to the fuel cell. So we'll plumb up a short section of line probably from this uh, outlet here and pick up the original return to the fuel cell. Uh, so when this has too much fuel in it, it can spill back over in the cell. All right, so we got everything on the top side cleaned up here. Got all of our lines that we're no longer gonna be using disconnected. Uh, mopped up the big spill of V85 that we always seem to make when we play with the fuel system. And uh, we're ready to start building some of our new lines. So the return line coming back wasn't long enough to reach to the fuel surge tank, at least the way that I would have wanted it to. I like this stuff to be pretty clean, so weren't able to reuse that. However, the original feed line, or I'm sorry, the original return line can be used as the new feed line for the surge tank. So we're gonna pop a new end on that real quick. I'll shoot a little bit of footage showing how I do the PTFE fuel lines. I prefer to use PTFE lined 6AN hose or 8AN hose um, or 10AN if it's big power stuff. But I always like the PTFE line stuff for fuel systems because it's pretty much vapor impermeable. So if you got the vehicle sitting in the garage, or in our case, the shop, you don't have that fuel vapor smell coming from, you know, an, uh, just a vehicle sitting there, even though it's not running. So I prefer to use this stuff. It's a little bit more expensive. It's a little bit harder to work with, but um, just a lot better material, in my opinion. So I made a little mark here where we're gonna slice this line at. I use cable cutters because I don't like to get debris in it from the cutoff wheel. So get that cut, resquare my line. There's always a few little stragglers of the braid hanging up. We'll trim that up a little bit. Make sure we're gonna have a real nice surface for that ferrule to go down on. Compression nut goes on first. Then you can peel your tape off. Now with PTFE AN hose, you've got to separate the stainless braid from the PTFE liner. 
because you drop a little compression ferrule in there that bites on that liner, um, kind of like a traditional compression fitting would, which is what gives you the strength of the seal on this sort of stuff. So I work my way around this. I'm being careful not to jab into that liner, slowly trying to roll this away. Obviously our tube gets distorted a little bit. I just use a punch to make that nice and circular again. And we can drop the ferrule on. What you want to be careful of is this residual stainless braid that's hanging out there. You don't want to get that underneath the ferrule because it's going to affect your seal. If it's in your way, work on getting it out of your way. Just want to be sure that that doesn't get underneath there. push this against my workbench because I've stabbed my hand too many times but I get that seated to where you can see the liner is right up against the ridge of that ferrule inside the the lip there you want to make sure that's all the way up because there's two spots where this will bite down on that inner liner to seal once you're comfortable with that you can slip your fitting in I give everything a real nice twist to make sure it's nice and firmly seated and then you can bring your compression nut up to meet it. At this point, I put it in the vise. Give it a decent clamp. Now we've got to work this braid down underneath the start of the threads. What I'm doing is just kind of walking that braid down on the nut. To where when I start to thread this, I don't have anything in the threads that would create a cross thread situation. That's going in there real nice. I give this a shove from underneath to make sure this hasn't walked out at all. Spot a little bit of assembly lube in there. I just used WD-40. And then we can work on giving this nice little twist down. I hold the bottom again to make sure it's not walking out. All right, should be good. Usually I'd pressure test this, but I don't have 8 a.m. pressure test port set up. I'm set up for 6 a.m. like we build our trans lines with, but I'm comfortable enough with assembling these that I'm pretty confident we're not gonna have a leak. So we're gonna go ahead and get this put on. All right, brought this over here to the surge tank. With everything lined up as it should, it should have a real nice fit here. Get one side run down. go right here with it good nice and straight have a little bit of compliance so that if we're vibrating we're not torquing this fitting too hard but otherwise pretty good fit So we got the top side plumbed in real nice. So like we talked about before, feed going to the engine. 
feed coming from the fuel cell to the surge tank, return going from the surge tank back to the fuel cell, and then return from the engine going back to the surge tank. So let's go ahead and put the truck up in the air. Now that we got the top done, we gotta to take a look at the bottom, see what we gotta change underneath there. All right, now you guys bear with me under here. This thing was a daily driver for a long time. It ain't the cleanest setup under here. But up there, I know the lighting ain't great. I should have brought a flashlight, but that's our bulkhead fitting that we added for the new feed. That is the return coming from the engine. Let's scoot underneath the cross member here. And then those were our two original feeds that the fuel cell feed for the primary pump and secondary pump. That came over here and collected into a Y fitting. Hopefully that shows up on video. What we're gonna be doing is doing away with the Y and we're gonna pick right up into the feed, 10 a.m. feed that goes all the way to the front of the truck. All right. You can see a little better now. Letting that drain off. We're going to be getting rid of the Y. Both of those feeds we're going down to a single 10 a.m. feed instead of the two eights into a 10. without draining I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the two 8ANs from the previous bulkheads right there temporarily set up up there we're gonna try to see what length we need and figure out exactly how we're running this line we'll get marked up Got that tied up there on the bed cross member. I'll probably add a couple more mounts to make sure that's secure. I don't like fuel lines vibrating around. It runs back over here into our bulkhead. So, pretty much done with the plumbing side of this. I'm ready to move on to the wiring portion. All right, so we've got the Racetronics hot wire kit in for the truck. Uh, I originally talked about wiring in the lift pump in the fuel cell to the original pump wiring, uh, but we decided against that for a couple of reasons. Um, one being that my Terminator X integration harness wasn't hooked up to power the factory wiring, so I would have had to do some wiring to correct that anyway. But the real reason is the 99-02 to truck wiring for the pump is known to be undersized, so it's already an issue uh, related to wiring sizes. We're running at 340 in the pump, so I just didn't want to risk burning up wires and thought uh, we might as well do this the right way with a hot wire kit. I like Racetronics, uh, so we're gonna do a little unboxing here, if you will, uh, show why I like their harness. I run their dual pump harness already on the truck for the twin pumps that were previously set up, and I'll also be using it for the twin pumps in the surge tank. Um, we're just adding this for the lift pump in the cell, so we'll have a total of three pumps powered uh, with Racetronics hot wire kits. If you open this up, you've got their main harness. It's uh, real neatly loomed, neatly wired. Uh, everything is labeled real well. They also include some connectors, some zip ties, some heat shrink, silicone lube, uh, some fu the replacement fuses. They got a really nice complete kit and I think they're priced pretty well overall. So 
So one of the reasons that I like their kit uh, versus others is because they position the relays at the front in the engine compartment. Some of the other companies position them in the back uh, and they run us, you know, the power wire all the way up to the front. I don't really like it that way. I prefer the relays under hood and just the power wire to the pump running to the back. These are your connections that go to the battery. You've got 10 gauge power. You got ground for the relay. That's a thinner gauge wire because it is just grounding the relay. It is not grounding the pump. You've got the relay here. It's weatherproof 30 amp relay. Inline fuse. So pretty short section here. Keep everything nice and tidy in the engine compartment. Battery connection, fuse, relay. And then you've got the single power wire running to the back. They also run the relay trigger wire to the back. I just pull that out of the harness because I trigger from under hood uh, and I just cut that shorter. This is your power wire that runs back to the pump. Again, 10 gauge power, that's nice. They also include a section of ground wire for the pump too. So 10 gauge as well. This will go to your pump negative at the tank and this will go to a solid chassis ground. Uh, I use the frame of the truck itself. So we'll get all that wired up uh, and ran on the truck and uh, we'll get it, get it going the right way. Wanted to take a quick video that showed the Racetronics setup that is currently in the trucks for the dual pumps. So I mount them back here. I'll probably mount the lift pump right here just to keep everything tidy. I have all this hidden, but it looms up here and goes directly to the battery. I tied it into one junction point here instead of two uh, just to keep things a little bit tidier. And then each of those has a single power wire that runs back to the fuel cell in the back that was powering both the pumps that were originally in the cell. We're just going to link them a couple of those and move them over to the surge tank and uh, go ahead and drop this new relay wire for the lift pump so we're good to go. All right, so we got the hot wire kit wired in. You can see my third relay mounted there. I put an L on the new relay, so I knew it's for the lift pump in the original cell. But I've got it all tied in to the constant power stud inside the fuse box cover. I've got it grounded back here at the firewall. And then inside my wiring here, we've got to do some wire organization. But inside here, we've got um, both of the lift pump and the primary fuel surge tank pump wired in to be tripped by the Holly EFI. And then again, that, that third pump, uh, second pump in the surge tank, comes in under boost. Everything's plumbed in back here. We got everything wired up. I have the primary pump wires left off of the surge tank. We're going to prime the surge tank, so I don't want the pump inside the surge tank running at first. We're gonna get some fuel in the surge tank using the pump that's inside the fuel cell. And then uh, once we got a little bit of fuel in the surge tank, we'll hook that back up, make sure everything fires up, we don't have any leaks. So we'll go ahead and get this lifted up. We'll take a look at some of the wiring underneath and uh, we should be pretty much wrapped up. light here since it's kind of dark under the lift so those are the wires for my hot wire kits uh, the larger loom carries both uh, primary and secondary pump for the surge tank smaller loom is the new hot wire kit we put on uh, that is now powering the remaining lift pump that is left inside the, the fuel cell so we got that tied up uh, run it kind of in and out of the frame weave it follow the fuel lines on the way to the back So we've got the ground and the lift pump power coming through the bulkhead connector there in the bed. Surge tank fuel pump power is coming through that bulkhead along with the ground wires for them. 
and everything's grounded to a frame mounted chassis ground there. We uh, ground that down to metal, make sure we got a real good ground connection. Obviously the goal with all this is to have a reliable fuel pump power supply uh, without having to worry about wire gauge or intermittent connections uh, or voltage drop or anything of that nature. So that's uh, one of the great things about the hot wire kits is you're basically pulling direct battery or direct alternator power and it's a lot more reliable of a setup.